thank everybody for coming to my virtual magic show today. Uh, we have unusual circumstances, as you know, and we wanted to make sure that we got you some entertainment. So I'm pleased to do a magic show for you guys today, and we're just going to have some fun. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to try to enjoy it as well. The first thing I'd like to do is to show you this. Now, some of you have seen me do this at your library before, and I promised I was going to take it out of the show. But when I heard about the virtual show, I thought, you know what? Let's see if this works, because I heard it does through the camera. So if you guys, if you've seen this before, you know what to do. But if you don't know what to do, listen to my instructions. What I would like for you to do is to watch the silver dot in the center of the disc. The harder you stare at it, the more you concentrate, the better the illusion is going to work on you. You have to stare at this the entire time. Try not to blink, but it's okay if you do. So, this will take about 45 seconds. I don't have anything else in my hand. Watch the center. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, watch it just spin round and round, round and round it goes. Just watch that silver dot in the middle of the disc. The harder you stare at it, the more you concentrate, the better the illusion is going to work on you. <coughs> just focus and stare in the center. Do not look above or below or to the left or the right. Just focus in the middle, watch the middle, stare into the center of the disc. I will now count backwards from 10. Please do not count with me. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, look at my head. Did you guys see anything? You should have seen my head getting bigger. This is called the growing head and shrinking head illusion. Let's do it again. If you didn't see it, let's try it one more time, see if we can get it to work. Here we go. Once again, try not to blink, it's okay if you do, but you have to stare at the center the entire time. Let's get started. Once again, the disc spins around, this time in the reverse direction. Hey kids, that means the opposite direction. Now the instructions are so simple, I feel silly telling them to a second time. If you want to see the solution, you have to stare in the center. You have to do the work, I can't do it for you. Don't look away, just focus in the middle. Again, do not look above or below, or to the left or the right. For the last time, I will count backwards from 10. Please do not count with me. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Look at my head. Did you guys see it? You should have seen my head getting smaller this time. This is the growing head and shrinking head illusion. I'm going to show you how to make this so you can do it at home. First of all, <coughs> you don't need the drill, kids. So, Mom and Dad, if you're watching, I'll show you how to do a kid's version where you don't need to have the drill. I'm an adult and I do a lot of shows, so I use it all the time. But, let me show you how to make it without using the drill. Basically, this is just a disc. Now, what you want to do is to get a piece of cardboard and cut it into a circle roughly about 12 to 18 inches across. On that brown cardboard, if you were to take a black marker and make this design on the front, then you have your hypnotic wheel. Now you can use the optical illusion books at the library when they open, or feel free to go online and hit Hypnotic Wheel to get that design. Once your design is on the front, you're ready to go. You're looking for a light and dark contrast, so the brown and the dark black will work. But I use uh, different colors. I have black and yellow, I have black and orange for Halloween, red and green for Christmas. So you can use, you just want light and dark colors. Then put a screw and a washer through the front, and a locking uh, washer and a nut on the back and now you have this apparatus to do this. Now how do you make it spin without the drill? Excellent question. I know you kids were thinking that. What you want to do is you get this piece of wood. That's called a dowel. You probably have a long one going across your closet where you hang up your clothes. Don't take that one. You'll get into trouble. Have mom and dad go to the hardware store when they get time and get you a little piece like this. And if they were to drill a little hole into the side, into the end right there, all they have to do now is to screw it into the screw, and kids, you now have your very own groin and shrinking head illusion. To make it spin, just hang on to the piece of wood, just like this, and spin it really fast in your hands, and you have the exact same thing. And the cool thing is, is when you're done, if you unscrew it, it lays flat, and you can pack it in your drawer or wherever you want to put your magic stuff. So that's called the growing head and shrinking head illusion. Are you guys ready for another trick? I can't hear you. Yell louder. All right, we'll do another one. Here we go. Let me set that off to the side. All right, for our next trick, I'm going to do a trick that I do in all my library shows. 
I found that most of the libraries have the secret of this trick in their magic books on the shelf. It's down to three pieces of rope. It's one of my signature tricks I do in almost every show, and I'd like to show it to you. Now, usually when I have a live audience, I have the audience members look the rope over so they can pull on it to make sure it's nice and tight. But since we're on a virtual show, um, we'll just save some time. So I have one small rope, I have one medium rope, and one long rope. And we're going to put these together just like this, side by side. All I'm going to do is to take the small rope, put it up toward the top, the medium rope right alongside of it, and the long rope right alongside of that. Now, just by snapping my fingers, you can actually see the magic happen. Did you guys see it happen? No, I didn't see it happen, but on the count of three, watch this. Here we go. Are you ready? One, two, whoops, I said three, and they all become the same size. I actually have one medium rope. I now have two medium ropes. I now have three medium ropes. All I have to do is to grab the ends, give them a little bit of a shake, and we've got the small rope back, the medium and long rope, all back to the original size. Thank you. That's one of my favorite tricks. And you can find that. It's called Equal and Unequal Ropes. You can find it in almost every library's magic books in the 793 section. All right, let's do another one. <coughs> I would like to bring up a volunteer, I think, for this trick. Perhaps we have uh, a young lady out in the audience who would like to help me. Perhaps we have a couple people out in the audience. Um, you, sir, would you like to come up and help out? And perhaps uh, this young lady would like to come up and join us. And I need one more. Who could this be? Let me look around and see. Oh, perhaps you, young lady, if you would like to come up and join us. We'll get, let's give all of our helpers a big round of applause for coming up and joining. All right. You guys can just stay right there. Now, I'm actually going to attempt to read your minds today. I'm actually going to attempt to read your minds today. Come on over. <coughs> All right, face the audience. Big smiles. The audience loves big smiles. All right. And your first name is? Kaylee. Kaylee. Toto. Toto. Mary. And Mary. We have our three volunteers, Kaylee, Toto, and Mary. Now, I have a little device here that I'm going to get out. This is called a dice. It's got numbers on the sides that are all over the different numbers on each side. I don't know if you've noticed that. And we have a box that has a lid. And so if you put this in, you can actually cover this up. But I want you to show the audience what number you chose without me seeing it. My back will be to the audience. And when you say ready, I'm going to turn around and tell you what number you chose. I'll be able to read your mind. All right? So look the dice over. Look the box over. And when you're done, and you can use the table behind you if you need to. I'll turn my back, and you're going to let me know when you're ready, and I'm going to tell you what number you chose. Do you understand? Perfect. All right. Let me know when you're ready. She's going to look the dice over, check it out. She's going to see if she can fool me. All right. I wonder what number she'll pick. She'll let me know when she's ready. Ready. She's ready. I get to turn around. I'm going to see if I can figure out what number she chose. Now, if you look at her face, do you see her face there? That is a face of confidence. In fact, she's so confident, she's chosen the highest number possible, the number six. Is that correct? Yes. Let's take a look. It's a six. Give her a round of applause. All right, give it to this young man, and you can go back to your seat. Thank you for coming up. All right, sir, any number you would like, check everything out, look it over. You stay ready when you're finished. I'll turn around and give you some privacy. Don't be afraid to challenge the magician. I accept all challenges. And you just let us know when you're done. All right, I can turn around. Yes. All right, here I come. And now he's given this away several different ways. If you've noticed, he was the second one to look at the box. And he's got two arms behind his back. And he also blinked twice. I'm guessing he went with the number two. Did you choose two, sir? Sure it's did. a two. Give him a round of applause. All right, give it to this young lady right down here. And you can go back to your seat. Thank you for coming up. Fantastic job. And young lady, will you tell us uh, what number you would like to go with? No. Oh, she's not going to tell us. She's going to make it more challenging for her. Let's make it even more challenging. I'll turn around again. Go ahead. Any number you would like. See if you can fool the magician. She's going to do her best. Ready. I will turn around and see if she can get it. Now, she's made this very simple for us because she's the third person to look at it. She's not very challenging at all. She made it way too easy. I'm guessing she might have gone with the number of three kids. Do you think? Let's take a look. It's a three! Give her a round of applause! All right, I'll take this back and you can go back to your seat. Thank you so much for coming up. All right, I'm ready for another trick. Hey, this is fun. Are you guys having fun? I hope you are. If you need to get up and do something, go ahead. We'll just keep going along here. Uh, I think I could use another volunteer, though. <coughs> 
I'm going to need uh, another, maybe perhaps an adult would come up. Perhaps the young lady over here would join us up here. Let's give her a round of applause. I think this is her first time coming up today. All right. And, uh, and uh, what is your first name? Mary. Oh, we have Mary up here again. Mary, would you come over here, please? I'd like to work with you over here. Now, Mary, um, do you like to read? Yes. Oh, that's very important. I think it's important to read. Do you read your child at night and stuff yeah. like that? Do you use the library a lot? Yeah. Mary uses the library a lot. That's wonderful. And it's, reading is so important for the kids. You just learn so much when you're doing it. I have a secret I would like to tell you. Now, I live in Davenport, Iowa. I don't know if you're familiar with Davenport, Iowa. But I've actually read every single book in the Davenport Library. Not just one branch, but all three branches. And I know that's hard to believe because they get new books in almost every week. It's hard to keep up sometimes. But do you think, do you believe me when I say that I've read every book? I have, I can prove it. I actually have a book here from the Davenport Library. This is a book on the adventures of Sherlock Holmes written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. One of my favorite books, actually. I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan. And you can look in here and I just want you to check out the book, make sure it's not all the same words on every page if you would, check it out. Looks pretty good, not all different. Now, I want you like to just stand right here, if you will, and I'm going to have you face that direction, if you will. Now, I'm going to put my back to your back like this, all right? And that's so um, I'm actually going to read your mind. See, what you're going to do when I tell you to is you're going to open up your book, look at a sentence in the book, and memorize those words. Without me even looking, I'm going to tell you what words you were thinking of. All right? So, back to back, just like this. And I want you to concentrate on your book. Now, go ahead and open it up. Now, wait a minute. If I was to peek behind you, you would see me, you could feel me leaving, right? So right. you know if I was trying to cheat. Right. All right, so here we go. Back to back. What I want you to do now is I want you to look in your book, open it up to a page, and see if you can tell me. Well, just open it up to a page. What page number are you at? No, don't say it. Don't say it. Concentrate on the first three words at the top of the page. Have you got it? Yes. All right, what page number are you at? 125. 125 is one of my favorites, actually. I, that's, I can't believe you even turned to that because that's a lie. I believe the first three words, if you were to think carefully up at the top, now every page says Sherlock Holmes on it, obviously, but the first three words was, was she his? Would I be correct on that? Yeah. Isn't that amazing how I can do this? Yeah, try, let's do it again. All right? Back to back. I don't want you to think I'm cheating. Go to another page. I might have gotten lucky. Maybe they're little all the same words on every page. Who knows? Check it out. Okay. Uh, what page number are you at? 151. I love 151. Uh, go a few more pages in and tell me where you flip to. 157. 157 is excellent. On that page, go down to the second paragraph. Would you do that for us, please? Yes. Second paragraph. And I would like you to tell us, um, well, why don't you look at the first three words again, okay? Have you, are you memorizing those? Yes. Now concentrate on it so I can figure them out. Uh, were those first three words, I could not? Correct. I got those right, too? Yes. Isn't that amazing how I'm doing it? All right, let's do this again. All right, check it out. Now, what I want you to do is to uh, go to another page and, and let us know. A little further in, maybe. Now, what page did you come to? 175. 175 is excellent. Looking at that page, I want you to go down to the very last of the sentence in the page. Can you do that for us? Yes. Very last sentence. Does the last few words of that say, drive like the devil? Yes. Isn't that amazing? Let's give our friends a big round of applause. Excellent. Now, you have, wait, do you have any idea how this trick is done? No. No idea at all? No. Some of the kids think I had an extra book up here. They really <laughs> did. They think that I had the extra book. But actually, if you look carefully, all the pages are blank. Let's give our helper a big round of applause. Thank you so much for coming up. Fantastic. All right, let's set that off to the side. And let's have some more fun. I like to bring up volunteers. Perhaps we could bring up a young lady in the audience. Let's see if there's any young ladies. The lights here. Oh, there's one in the front row. Would you come up and join us, please? And would you come over here, please? And what is your first name? Kaylee. Kaylee. Kaylee, I think I'm going to have you on this side if I could. Oh, maybe over here. No, I think over here would you look a little better over here. I'm sorry. Same right here. That was kind of like a yo-yo, wasn't it? Um, would you like a chance to win some money yeah, today? You like a chance to win some You like money? What do you do with money when you get it? Save it. Oh, you save? Well, she's one of the good ones. Some kids like to spend it, but do you hear her kids? She likes to save it, take a good lesson from Kaylee. All right. <coughs> I actually have some black bags up here that have some numbers on them, and um, you have a chance to win some money. So we have bag number one, 
we have bag number two, they're all numbered here on the front, and bag number three. We're going to line these up according to numerical order, one, two, and then three. You get to decide which bag you think has the money in there. Now, I'm a very honest person, so if you win the money, you can keep the money. But if you don't win it, well, you know how that works. You have to go back down and sit down and be unhappy for the rest of the show. Do you think you can sit down and be unhappy for the rest of the show? That's not too hard during my show, is it? All right, so what number do you think is, has the money in it? Now, wait a minute. I'm going to say some things about these bags, trying to trick you, trying to fool you. So when you choose a bag, you're going to think it was your choice. But it's really going to be the choice that I wanted you to pick. You just won't know the difference. Parents would love to have this skill. Are you ready to play? All right, you might choose bag number three. See, that's the bag the girls always choose. <gasps> you're a girl. You might want to choose that bag. It's a perfect match. Bag number two, that's the one that the boys always choose. Well, you're not a boy. But see, bag number one, that's the one that has the money in it. So do you want to go with number three, the one that the girls always choose? That's you. Perfect match. Bag number two, the one that the boys always choose, or you're not a boy. Or bag number one, that's the one that has the money in it. Which one do you want? Bag number one. Bag number one? Seriously? Mm -hmm. You know, they ch never choose one. They always choose the boy or the girl bag. Let's see what's in bag number one. Oh, I, th I think I've lost. Well, I, I made a promise to her. I guess this is yours. She's won the money. Unfold it and show everyone what you've won. Show it to the camera. Guys, she's won the money. Let's give her a big round of applause. Fantastic, but don't go away. See, you chose number one. If you had chosen number two, that's the one that the boys always choose. Inside was a $5 bill today. That's the one that the boys choose, a $5 bill. But if you'd chosen the one that the girls choose, bag number three, inside today, was a $10 bill, a $10 bill. But you know what, she still goes back to her seat of winner. She's walking away with the $1 bill. Let's give her a super round of applause. Thank you, Kaylee, for coming up. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, let's put that off to the side and let's do something else for you guys. I just love bringing up volunteers. I'll need another volunteer this time. Somebody that knows how to write numbers. Somebody that knows how to write numbers uh, perhaps if we had uh, uh, someone in the audience, perhaps, uh, oh, there's a person in the front row. I'll, I'll go ahead and, would you take that notebook, uh, sir? Thank you. And um, I have a big pan here, sir, if you'd hang on to that for us. Thank you. I'm a woman. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. And I, oh, I don't need the deck of cards. I just need these cards. Now, don't write anything yet, but when I tell you to, I would like for you to write down any number that you want between 1 and 60. Write it big so we can see it on the notebook, okay? Now, um, there's nothing on the back of these cards. All right, I'll just show you real quick. And these all have different numbers on them. But if you pay attention to the cards, the numbers, they're in numerical order. So we actually have one, three, five. They all go down in numerical order. So it's easy to find the number that you're looking for. And every card is like that. This one starts at one. This one starts at 32. That one starts at 16. That one starts at eight. But you see how they're all in numerical order? There we go, number four. And that one starts at two, all in numerical order. Every card is like that. So think of a number between one and 60. I'll turn around, go ahead and write it down now, and tell me when you're ready. Any number that you'd like, between one and 60. I had somebody write 84 once. That is not between one and 60. Tell us when you're done. Now, I'm going to have you come up and stand right about here where I am and open the notebook up to show the audience what number you chose. I won't look. Come on up and show the audience the number you chose, and then you can sit back down and tell me when you sat back down. I sat back down. All right, so the audience has seen the number. I don't know what it is. I'm just going to show you these cards, and I want you to say yes or no is your number on this card. So answer truthfully, because if you get it wrong, our friends at home have seen the number, and they'll correct you out loud. They may yell so loud, you'll hear it. All right, go ahead. Is your number on this card yes or no? No. She says no. Is your number on this card yes or no? Yes. She said yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. And yes or no? No. No. All right. So her number was on this card, she said? Yes. On this card, she said. Yes. On this card, she said. Yes. And on that card. So your number had to be the number 60, is that correct? Yes. Let's see it. 
It is 60. Let's give her a round of applause, boys and girls. Thank you very much. I'll take that back. Fabulous job. All right. Let's push this off to the side. And let's do another one. I have a fun one here for you guys today. I brought with my coloring books. I've been doing some coloring at home. You know how they have those adult coloring classes for adults at the libraries now? Well, since the libraries aren't open, we have to color at home now. So I bought these coloring books. I thought they'd be cool. I'd like to show them to you. So this one here actually has some colors inside. Did I do a pretty good job, kids? I didn't go out of the lines at all. Do you see that? Now, I haven't filled in these ones yet. These have the line. Oh, oh, that's a blank one. There's no lines in there at all. Well, maybe this one's the one that has the lines in it. Oh, that's a blank one, too. Hmm, we have a problem here, boys and girls. Which one had the colors ones in it? The ones with the colors? In the, this one here? Are you sure? Well, let me take a look. You're right, that one does have the colors in it. Let's have some fun with magic. I'm going to mix these books up using my world-famous sleight of hand. I'm going to go very, very fast mixing these up. Your job is to keep your eye on the book with the colors. All right, if you can't keep up, it's okay. I'm just that fast, but do your best at home, okay? All right, I'm going to mix these up. Are you ready? It's going to happen very fast. Keep your eye on the one with the colors. I'll show you one more time. All right, here we go. Ready? Go! All right, watch very carefully. I know this is going fast. I know this is going fast. Let's see who thinks they know which one has the colors. How about you on the audience? Which one do you think has the colors? The right. The right? This one here? Let's take a look. No, that's the blank one. That's the blank one. And the one in the middle, again, must have, yeah, that's the one with the colors. I guess it never really left the middle. We'll do it again. I'll go slower. But we might have too many books on the table. Let me remove one, and we'll make it more challenging. All right? We'll set that right there. Now, let me mix these books up using my world-famous sleight of hand. Remember, when a magician makes a secret magic move, we want everything to look the same. So you may see me doing some of the same moves I just did earlier. Here we go. Ready? Go! Watch very carefully. I know this is confusing. Ooh. All right, watch carefully. All right, where is the book? Is it book one, two, or three? Would you tell us? Two. <coughs> this one right here? Well, let's take a look. No, that's the blank one. Yeah, see, the one in the colors one is right over here. Now, I know what's happening. I might be going too fast. Let me remove the one with the color, or the one blank one here, and we'll see if we can make this simpler for you. Now, all you have to do is to watch one of the colors, okay? Which one is it? This one? Yes, you're right. All right, are you guys ready? I'm going to mix these up. Here we go. One, two, three, go! Oh, that looks silly, doesn't it? Can you believe I get paid for this? That's even the sillier part. All right, boys. With girls, which where's the book at? Is it book one, two, or three? Which one is it? One. Two? No, it's not a two. There's no book there. One. One? Let's take a look. No, that's the blank book. If that's the blank one, that means the colored one is over there. And this would leave us with our other blank one. And that's the mystery of our coloring books. Boys and girls, thank you for watching. I hope you're doing a lot of coloring at home with your coloring books. I enjoy coloring, and I even turned it into a magic trick. Thank you so much. All right. Let's get out another trick. And I would like another volunteer. We just have lots of volunteers. Let me see. I've got to bring somebody up this time. Uh, somebody who doesn't mind getting hurt. This is my favorite part of the show, where I get to hurt a child. Hurt the child. Yes, you heard me correctly. Uh, perhaps, uh, well, perhaps this young person right over here. Would you come up and join us, please? And what is your name? Kaylee. Kaylee. You may have noticed Kaylee's been coming up several times throughout the show. She's been nice enough to help us out with our virtual uh, videotaping. And Kaylee is a magician herself, actually, uh, by the name. She's actually Iowa's youngest magician. Uh, so anyway, let's involve her in this next trick. And Kaylee, I would like to, uh, I said I was going to hurt you, didn't I? I'm a very honest person, so let me get out my props. You stay right there. Right over here. Here we go. I have a handkerchief. And I have a device that we're going to put on you in just a second. Now, I want you to look the handkerchief over, make sure there's nothing unusual about it. Look for something that I might have hidden inside. Now, I've only blown my nose on it a couple of times, so don't worry about that. No, I teased. I didn't really do that. All right, we'll set that here. You set it on the table. I don't want to touch it. All right, now, the device that we're going to put on you today is a pair of thumb cuffs. These work just like police handcuffs. Yeah, they have the same locking mechanism as police cuffs. And we have a set of keys here, and 
I'm going to set those there so your mom won't worry, okay? And uh, I want you to look those over, check them out. And when you're done looking them over, hand them back to me. These have the same locking mechanism as a pair of real handcuffs. In fact, I got this pair from a Rock Island police officer. When he found out I was a magician, he dared me to get out of these. And when he was, uh, when I got out of them, he was so impressed, he let me keep them. And I use them in all my shows. The reason why they don't put these on people anymore is they tend to cause severe pain on the thumbs. I'd like to put them on you if I could. Ooh, she's very brave. Do you see that? All right, pull out your thumbs. All right. Now, this is going to hurt. I'll be as gentle as I can. You tell me you want me to stop, okay? Are you okay? Yeah. Still okay? Yeah. Smile for the camera so they know. Still okay? Yes. One more time. Oh, okay, ooh, I think we should stop that there. You see that look on her face. Now, try to find a way to get out. Now, what you guys can't see at home is this is actually cutting the circulation off of her thumbs. or turning a bright purplish red right now. Uh, I hope they don't fall off. So, you try to find a way to get out. When you want out, just say, red bag of light out. Would you like out? Yes. Oh, she would like out, but she's the key to get her out. I literally can't move my thumbs. She says she can't move her thumbs. All right, we're going to get her out. That hurt, doesn't it? Yeah. See, when I say I'm going to hurt somebody, I'm going to hurt them. I'm a very honest person. But you know what, Kaylee? You are nice enough to let me hurt you. I'm going to give you the same opportunity to hurt me. Is that fair? Yeah. Payback. She was raised well. All right. I want you to point to the audience where the key is at. I have no keys in my hand. Show them where the key is at. Now, I want you to put these on as tight as you can, but don't worry about hurting me, okay? I'm a pretty tough guy. Put them on as tight as you can. Don't be afraid. Push hard. Hard. I can do that to you. You've got the skin in the middle. That hurts. She's very strong for her age. Would you grab the handkerchief that we have on the table? The one I blew my nose with? Well, I didn't really do that. All right. <laughs> All right. Grab the handkerchief and put it over the hands. Perfect. All right. And I just want you to stand here and look at the camera and say hi to everybody. No, just right over here would be great. No. Just look at the camera. Just look at the oh, Come on over here. Just look. You're hanging out. Just look at this. What? You're hanging out. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Look, no, that's how I'm locked up. Am I locked up tight? Uh-oh. You need to go tighter. What's that? You need to go tighter. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. Okay. All right, put it over. Put the handkerchief over. Put it right over the top. They're locked up. Now stand here and face the audience. Now this time I want you to wave. Come over here. Wave to the big audience. Wave to everybody. We've got people all out there. Wave to everybody so that they know. All right. Ooh, there's a guy over there. Wave to him. Wave to him. Wave to him. Look at the audience. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. All right. Look at the handkerchief. Still locked up, right? All right. Lift it up. All right. On the count of three. One, two, three. We're out of the thumb cuffs. Audience, don't say a word. From the time that I was locked up to the time I escaped, I was locked up the entire time, is that correct? No. How could I be not locked up? Because you were touching me. <laughs> oh, she's good. She's really good. Well, she's correct. Yeah, I was able to get out of these. This is a Harry Houdini escape illusion. And you can learn about Harry Houdini escape books from the library. Again, they'll be in their biographies for that. And Harry Houdini was the greatest escape artist. In fact, every escape magic that's done in today's uh, on television or any time that you see one is using his principles. A lot of people don't know that. Um, it, it, almost every escape uh, routine is using his principles and just to change the props or the idea a little bit. So, how did we get out of this? I'd like to show this one to you. Would you like to learn? Since you were nice enough to let me hurt you and have some fun with you. Well, we don't need the handkerchief. That just covered up the secret. And these aren't regulation cuffs. These are not trick cuffs, boys and girls. Um, so how did I do it? When I put my thumb in and she, we, we closed it, nobody, not her, not me, nobody's getting out of these. So I had to do a tricky sleight of hand move for this to work. So what I did, I put my thumb in, and I bent my thumb down, and I pulled back on the nail. And when I pull on the nail like this really hard, it makes this part of my thumb thick and bloated up. So here it was pulling on the nail. This part is now thick and bloated up. We put it on tight, and when I let go, my thumb gets skinny, and it comes right out. Let's give our friend a big round of applause. Thank you, Kaylee, for coming up. Fantastic job. All right, let's have some more fun, boys and girls. All right, we'll put this over here. And I would like to bring up another volunteer. I love bringing up volunteers in my show. Let me see. I could use, um, perhaps an adult would like to come up this time. Perhaps somebody skeptical who doesn't believe in magic. Come on up, sir. We'll ask him if he believes in magic. Do you believe in magic, sir? Uh, no. He doesn't. We have to make him a believer, don't we, kids? I think he does. He's just a little shy. That's all right. But you know what? Even if he doesn't, I'm going to make a believer out of him with this trick right here. Sir, I happen to have a colored cube right here, and it has some rope around it. 
And this is one of my favorite tricks. This is a very, very rare antique magic trick handed down from magician to magician. I'm lucky enough to have this in my possession. Now, in order for me to do a trick with a multicolored block, you have to relax the block. And you do that by pulling on the rope that goes through the middle. At the end of each rope, we have what we call a power ring. So if you look closely, that's just a key ring. I'm on a low budget. All right, and we're going to hypnotize our block by using our power ring, counting to three. Watch carefully. Here we go. One, two, three. Did you see the block get hypnotized? No. We're going to prove that it is because I'm going to take the bottom ring, turn it up toward the top. The, the block will stop halfway down at my command for five seconds, then continue down the rest of the way. As soon as you see it stop in the center, when you count out loud to five for us. Good. Now, if you have any trouble counting to five, the boys and girls at home can help count with you, okay? All right, are you guys ready? Let's count with it. Let's help them out, okay? All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. And it dropped all the way down. I can actually have it drop slowly if I want it my command. Now, watch how we do this because you're going to try it afterwards. A lot of people right now, especially mom and dads at home, think they know how this trick is done. Or if I want, I can actually have it drop in five different places if I want it my command. One. Two, three, four, five. I can even have it go back down to the center again. One, two, three, four, five, and then all the way down. To dehypnotize a block, it's very simple. You just tap it onto the power ring three times. One, two, three, the block is now dehypnotized. Now, if you're not a professional magician, no. we would like for you to attempt this just to see if you can make it stop. A lot of the kids and parents at home think they have an idea that I was just pulling on the rope tight. That's what a lot of people think. We call that misdirection. So see if you can get that block to stop in the center. It's a little harder than it looks, isn't it? It is. All right, I tell you what, I'm going to have you take your hands out like this. And now bring your fists in and touch your fists together. Ladies and gentlemen, he's got the block to stop in the middle. Let's give him a big round of applause. Thank you so much for coming up, sir. Thank you. Fantastic. He'll be telling his kids at home about that one. All right. Are you guys ready for more? I think we need more volunteers. Perhaps a young lady in the audience would like to come up. <coughs> Let me see if I can find a cute young lady. Uh, oh, perhaps you, young lady, if you'd like to come up. There's one right there. All right. We're going to set you right over here. Now, I noticed when you had your hand up, I noticed that you had a little dimple in your arm over there. Did you know that you had a little dimple? Here, let's show it to the camera here. Let me come over here. Uh, no, follow me. Do you see that little dimple there? That's like a hole that's going through your arm where your whole like arm might fall off. Now, I think I can fix that for you. We have the camera here for the insurance purposes. Um, let me see if I can fix that hole. We don't want it to get any bigger where your arm just kind of falls off on the floor. I don't want to have to pick it up or anything. Let me see if I can fix it. You stay right there. I brought some medical devices over here by Magic Ropes, and uh, we'll see if we can get this fixed. Now, we only need two of these ropes, but we have three colors, if you notice. I want you to look all those over and hand me the two colors that you would like to use. Red and green. She likes Christmas, Mom and Dad. You should shop early. I'll take this back. We'll set that right there. Now, we're going to put the red to the green just like this. Hold out your left arm, please, straight, if you would. Fantastic. I held out my right. Did you notice she held out her left? She's a very intelligent young lady. We're going to put this right over on top of that dimple there, see if we can fix that. Rub it around a little bit, just like that. Now take your other hand and close your hands tight, just like that. Now is there any way those ropes are coming off your arm if you don't open up your hands? No, it's impossible actually. It can't happen. But what color is touching your arm? Is it red or green? Keep your hands up. Red. Red. It looks green to me. Boys and girls, help her at home. What color is touching your arm? They say green. Um, you said red. I'm going to give you another chance. Let's do this again. Pay attention, boys and girls. All right, what color is touching your arm? Is it red or green? Red. She says red. The smart kids always get it right on the second time. Yeah, sometimes we have to go three times, but the smart kids always get it right on the second time. This is just a simple color change. By pulling on the rope, I can get it to change colors. They have this trick in a lot of the magic books at the libraries, too, boys and girls. So, well, just by pulling on a rope, I can get it to change colors. That, that's called a color flourish. But we'd like to actually do a trick with it. So let's make it into a trick. She's going to open up her hands like this this time. We're going to take the rope, put it over. She's going to close her hands tight. Make sure they're nice and tight. Now, she has red and green on her arms. Is there any way those are coming off unless you open up your hands? Of course not. It's impossible. But what color do you like the best, red or green? Green. She likes green, so she's going to keep the green. I'm going to take the red and yank it right through her arm, through that hole that we had. And I guess I fixed it. There's no longer a hole there. It's fixed. You can open up your hands and go back to your seat. No charge for that. Let's give her a round of applause, everybody. Thank you. Fantastic. All right.
And I would like to do another trick for you, but I'm going to need some more volunteers. Perhaps we could bring up three volunteers. Perhaps these volunteers might even have a chance to win some money. Who would like to come up? Ooh, I have one, two, and three. All right. And we're going to bring up our three volunteers again. Just line up side by side, if you will. Fantastic. All right. Now, I'm going to get to help some props. You guys stay right there. Let me go off camera here and get our props and get back on camera. And you guys are so nice to come and help me today. I'd like to give you guys a chance to win a $10 bill. Yes, a $10 bill. All right. Who's on the $10 bill for president? I do not study presidents yet. Oh, she has not studied presidents? That's okay. I believe that says Hamilton right there. That's the elementary school that I went to when I was a young kid. All right, we'll set that there. You guys have a chance to win a $10 bill today. So I have a lock here. I'll need, uh, uh, would you look that over, sir? Make sure there's nothing unusual about the lock. It's a master lock from Menards. Look it up on your phone if you don't believe me. All right. Anything unusual? Nope. All it's right. Good. I'll hang on to the lock just like this. Now, I'm going to hang on to the silver part. You look over the whole thing. All right, and we have some keys here. Now, I'll set that right there. Keep an eye on that and make sure I don't switch it out. All right, so I want you to take one key. One key opens up that lock. The other three keys do not. Now, they look very, very similar, so it's hard to tell. All the keys look alike, but only one color here will open up the lock. Which one do you think opens it up? She says green, red, and blue. Green, red, and blue. That leaves me with the purple one. Now, each of us has a 25% chance of opening up this lock here. 25% um, chance of opening up this lock. So, if it's my key, I don't have to do anything. My work is already done. But if one of those guys has the key, I have to trick him into trading it back with me because I don't really want to give away $10 today. Now, I'd like to keep this myself, but we're going to give you guys the opportunity for helping out today. The chance of winning the 10. We'll set that right there. So, who's it going to be? Do you think it's your key that opens up the lock? Or do you want to switch to somebody else? Because I have to tell you, it's not the green key. And I try to trick me, you just said that. So. Yes, I am going to try to trick you, but I want to be honest with you, it's not the green key. In fact, if you don't trade with him or her, you'll never be able to open it up. Wait a minute, what if it's a purple key matches your shirt? What do you want to do, try or trade? Try. She's going to try, let's go ahead. She's going to try? Right away. Her key's upside down. Did it unlock? Set your key on the table, give her a big round of applause, she goes back to her seat. All right, three left, 33% chance. Sir, you want to try or trade? I have the purple one. I got to tell you something. It's not the red one. I never choose red. I always choose red. Okay, it's going to be her key or mine, the blue or the purple. If you don't trade, you will not have a chance of opening it up. But go ahead. Red. Red. Okay. Wait! I said that key will not work, sir. He I wants to try. All right. Wait! I told him it would not work. I think he still wants to try. Did it unlock? No. It did not unlock. Let's give him a big round of applause. He goes back to his seat. Two keys left. You have a 50-50 chance of winning this $10 bill, your lucky day. Now, do you want to trade with me, or do you want to try your key? What would you like to do? Trade. Trade, all right. You just gave me the key that's going to open it up. Would you like to trade that? Trade. Do you want to trade that? Wait a minute. What if it's not the blue key? What if I just tricked you into trading? It is this key that opens trade. up. She would like to trade. But it's the blue key. The blue key is the money key. Do you want to trade again? If she wants to trade again. I think she's very confused today. Now, uh, this is only a 45-minute show. I don't know if we mentioned that. We don't want to go 40 minutes with this. But it is the purple key that will open it up. Would you like to trade that? I'll try this one. She wants to try that. It's not the blue one. It's the purple one. I'll try this one. She wants to try that one. It's not the blue one. Last chance. I'll try this one. She wants to try that one. Did it unlock? All right, show the kids that, show the kids that it is the purple key. Would you unlock it for us, please? Oh, and unlock, give her a round of applause. Sorry, you did not win the $10 bill. Thank you. All right. We'll get all this off the table here. And I got a couple more things I'd like to do for you. <clears throat> First of all, I have a trick here that I love doing in libraries. I picked this up several years ago, and it's done with these giant cards. And every time I bring out these cards, the kids are always like, oh my gosh, look at the size of those cards. They want to see it. So I'm going to show the cards to you. Now, we have a first king of hearts, we have a second king of hearts, and we have an ace of clubs. First king, second king, and the ace of clubs. Who thinks they know which is my favorite card? Boys and girls, think of it at home. Which one do you think is my favorite card? Anybody have an idea? Yes, you in the back? The ace. Which one? Ace. The ace of 
Clubs. Clubs, yes, it's the ace of clubs. In fact, it's always the middle card that is my favorite card. Now, your job is to keep your eye on that ace of clubs. I'm going to get into a very silly sleight of hand stance. We call this misdirection. It gets people to stare at me when they really should be looking at the cards. Because nothing magical happens here, it's going to happen over here. On the count of three, watch very carefully. Are you ready? On the count of three. One, not yet. Two, not yet, but it's coming. Are you ready? Here we go. Three, which is my favorite card? Can you point to it, please? This one? No. This one? Yes. Let's see if she's right. Oh, she got it right. Give her a round of applause, everybody. Fantastic Do you job. See that? Fantastic. But wait a minute. What was my favorite card? Do you remember the number, the, what it was? Yes. What was it? The Ace of Clubs. Well, the Ace of Clubs used to be my favorite card. My new favorite card now is a library card. You can do so much more with this than you can in Ace of Clubs. In fact, if you walk into a library with an Ace of Clubs, they will not let you check out a book. I tried and I got laughed at. But when I walk in there with this card, they let me check out anything that I want that I have uh, an interest in that subject. You can do the same thing if you want to check out magic books. 793, take your card, check it out. If you like courses, if you like sports, this is the new magic card. I have one last trick that I would like to do for you guys today, and I thought we would end it with an adult volunteer. Uh, perhaps uh, you miss if you'd like to come up and join us. And I'm going to have you stand on this side of the table, please, if you will. Fantastic. And your first name again? Mary. We have Mary up here to help us out. Uh, Mary's going to help me out with this trick, and I'm going to do a card trick. Every magic show should have a card trick in it. And um, let's go ahead and get started. Now, I'm going to show you these cards, and if I had to choose a card now, I'm going to see what it is. That's not really good for anybody. So I'm going to turn the deck face down. When I fan out the cards, we want to choose one quickly because we usually have kids sitting down low and they can see underneath the deck and we don't want them to see the card that I chose. So watch very carefully. I'll fan the cards out. Mary's going to choose one. She's going to put it up against her stomach and take a peek at it so I can't see it. And don't let the boys and girls at home see it either, okay? All right, any card you would like, just choose one. Put it up against your stomach. Fantastic. She has her card. Let me put the rest of the cards away just like this and we'll get rid of those. Keep your card against her. Now take a peek at it so you know what it is. I won't look. Let me know when you're done. No. She has her card. She knows what it is. This is great. So concentrate on your card. Think of that card. We are now going to put you in charge of this routine. You are the boss. This is the last trick. So if it goes wrong, it's going to be your fault, not mine. Okay. Are you ready for that uh, kind of pressure? Yes. Fantastic. She has her card. She's memorizing it. Let's get started. I actually have a chart here that's got months. Now, I want you to think of a month between January and December. Any month you'd like. It can be January or December if you'd like. Any month. For instance, you might choose January. That's my birthday month. Or you might have a different month that you would like to choose. My point is, choose one of the 12 months of the year now, please. April. April. I'm not really fond of April. I would suggest that you change April. But do you want to keep it or change it? What would you like to do? Keep it. Even though I'm suggesting to change it, you're wanting to keep it. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. Well, you're the boss. She's the boss. She can do what she wants. That's what the bosses do. They make the decisions, like your mom and dad at home. All right, so you've chosen April. I have a chart here. And what she didn't realize, we have April right there at the top. This is a color chart. And we're going to count down the colors by using the months of the year. You guys can count with me. We do this like when we read a book. Are you ready? Here we go. January, February, March, April. What color do we stop at? Green. Now you can see if you chose a different month how we might have gotten a different color, but we had to have some color. We landed on green. green. These containers represent the colors on our color chart, each one of these, and we landed on green. green. Let's see what's inside the green container today. And inside is a playing card. Now this playing card is right there. You can see it. She chose a card earlier, if I remember correctly, out of the deck. Would you tell us what card you chose? Look at that, a perfect match. Give her a round of applause. How about that? Wait a minute, I know what you're thinking. Inside of these containers are more king of spades. Let's take a look. See, if she had chosen a different color like I suggested, or a different month, and she landed on red, look at that, a $20 bill. If inside the blue, would have been another $20 bill. Inside the orange container, another $20 bill. I bet you can guess pink and purple, and you'd be correct, more $20 bills. But instead, she got the only king of clubs. Let's give her another round of applause, everyone. All right. Now, I know what you're thinking, boys and girls at home, especially the parents. I'll bet you think there's a king of spades on the back of this bill and a 20 on the back of that card. Would you look behind the cans for the audience just to verify there's nothing back there? 
Again, a round of applause for Mary. You can go back and sit down. You are wonderful. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. I think I have one more trick I would like to do to end the show, a little grand finale. I'll need one child to come up. This could be any child in the audience. Let me look around, see who comes up. Somebody who hasn't been up before, you, would you like to come up and join us? All right. Come on over here. We're on limited volunteers with these virtual shows. Keep that in mind. All right, this is Kaylee again, Iowa's youngest magician. She's going to help me out with the very, very last trick of the show. Kaylee, I happen to have a black magic bag. You've heard of magicians having black bags before, I'm sure. Inside, I have, I have something for you. I would like for you to pull it out and show everyone what it is. But before we start, I need to ask you some personal questions. Do you know how to count to three out loud? Yes. Do you know how to clap your hands three times? Yes. Do you know how to hop up and down three times? Yes. Would you do hop up and down three times? One, two, three. She's good. Clap your hands three times. One, two, three. She's very good. And count to three. One, two, three. Oh, she's terrific. I think she's going to work out well for this. Reach inside and show everyone what's inside. Pull them out. And she has three white feathered rings. Now separate those. Yep, separate. Oh, pick it up. Don't let it fall on the floor. Three of them. Put them back together. Push them back into the bag, please. Put them all in at the same time. You can do it. Excellent. All the way down. Push all the way down. Fantastic. Now what I want you to do is to hop up and down three times. <coughs> Reach inside and pull out the white rings. <gasps> She's changed them to colors, yellow, blue, and red. A round of applause for our young lady. Go ahead and separate them, please, so they can see there's three rings there. I'll grab onto one of them. There we go, just like that, three separate rings. All right, push them back into the bag. You can do it. Push all the way down. Fantastic. Now this time I'm going to have you clap your hands three times. Go ahead. Reach inside and pull out those colored rings. She's changed them back to white. Another round of applause for our fantastic friend. All right, push them back in. All the way down to the bottom. You can do it. Now this time we're going to make it more challenging. This time I want you to clap your hands, hop up and down, and count to three all at the same time. Go. One, two, three. Just like that. That was a hard job. Let's give her a round of applause just for that. Reach inside and pull out the rings. Hold on to both hands tight this time. Get your other hand up there. Hang on tight. This time I'm going to count to three. And when I count to three, I want you to throw all three rings up into the air and see what happens. Are you ready? One, two, three. And they link together. Let's give her a big round of applause, everybody. Thanks for watching our show today. Guys, I hope you have a wonderful time. Try to find fun things to do at home. I know this is a difficult time for all of us, but we can make it fun if we try. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.